All right, guys, welcome back to episode two of The King's Table. How you guys doing? Good to see you. So oh, good. I'm doing amazing. We just I launched our first episode. episode count. Say again, Aaron. I said I can't wait till you forget the episode count. When no, you're like, I'm gonna, right I don't do that on remember. my episode. I may have to do that here, you know? Yeah. Episode 943. Here we go. Boom. All I'm right. Curious, well, what, I, I figured. Sorry, Mike. Go ahead. What? What? So Ashish is in Spain. So we have to remember there's like a one and a half second delay. Um, I'm curious what episode everybody's on on their show. Oh, I'm <laughs> north of seven or 800. I think we lost count after. I mean, I'm, this is going on year six and a half of Millionaire, six and a half or seven of Millionaire Mindcast. Wow. Oh, I'm That's only awesome. one, 120 maybe. I've been only been doing it for a year, year and a half maybe. I think so I got a long way to go. I'm pulling I'm up my count right mood. now. It's, it's really high. It's really high. Um, yeah, because you guys put out a lot. Yeah, so we have 1167 normal episodes and 125 state of the markets, so we're like 1300. Dang! Wow! Damn! Wow! It's one way so to much get lots good of downloads, content out publishing. there, right? Like so much free, good quality content out there. Yeah. So oh, good. the problem with the information age is there's too much content, though. No, Agreed. We know about that. Like, that's, we know about that. That's the whole other part. It's like, how do you actually filter down? Like somebody says, like, what are your best episodes when you've got thirteen hundred? They're like, where do I start? I'm like, I don't know. They're not going to listen all thirteen hundred. You know who did? Um, I took kind of a page out of his book that did a really cool podcast that helped me in my own kind of information filtering. Uh, Pat Flynn of Smart Passive Income Podcast. He was kind of one of my initial inspirations and he always had his passive income report up on the website and really cool how he built his brand. But one of the things that he said, he's got some really great episodes on like legitimate frameworks and systems that he uses in his business and in his life. And one of them was, there's so much information out there. Like how do you discern what you give your time to and not feel distracted and spread thin? And he does a very specific framework around categories of content and topics. And based on what he's working on in his business or he's super passionate about, he had this really cool filtering system of essentially only looking at and giving his time and energy to certain categories or topics of content and everything else got eliminated. So instead of it being like, hey, I love Ed Milet, I listen to all of Ed Milet's podcasts. It was like, no, I only listen to X topic of podcasts, whether it's Ed Milet or Andy Frisella or whoever, right? And I just thought that was a really cool way to approach things that I started doing where I was like, hey, I'm only focused right now on, in my world, I'll just say specifically food and beverage in hotels. And so I'm only listening and consuming content right now around food and beverage, hotels, programming, specific things in that area. And it really kind of helps you narrow your 500 lane freeway of information and content down to maybe two or three or four to get more specific and less distracted, which I thought was a kind of a cool, cool way of approaching it. That was actually the first question I was going to ask today. We did. There we go. I, I know. So I'm, 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 I'm worried to lean into it. So look, on the first on the first episode, we kind of went economic, but I thought in the second episode we could at least get people a little bit of a window into us and who we are a little bit more and start the dialogue that way. So I thought, you know, wh why don't we go around the horn here and say, what is what is a book that you're reading right now that's super fascinating or something that you recommend? Um, and then maybe we'll just lean into that question we were just talking about is we're in the information age. What do you consume? How do you consume it? And how do you do that productively? And let's just kind of go around the horn. Maddie, you want to kind of finish off those thoughts? Yeah, yeah, yeah I can I can wrap that up. Um, I, right now I'm, I'm reading um, Benjamin Hardy and Dan Sullivan's. I just finished it and I'm going through it for the second time. Uh, 10x is easier than 2x. And kind of just where I'm at in my life and my business, you know, I sold three of the hotels. I'm sitting on a bunch of cash trying to figure out what my next moves are. And I don't want it to be a 2X move. I want it to be a 10X move. And I feel like with where the economy's at and the opportunities that are coming, really trying to retool my mind 
uh, my habits, my routine, my relationships to go 10x versus 2x. So I've really enjoyed that book. And there's kind of a little prequel one that I read as well. It's called U Squared, which is all about quantum leaps. And it's kind of like Grant Cardone's little mm-hmm. you know, pamphlet, 30 pages. You can get through it in 45 minutes. Good read. So those are the two that I'm, I'm currently digging in right now on. And yeah, I mean, that's kind of where I went from buttoning up a lot of my hotel assets and sales and, you know, getting out of a, a partnership and, and, you know, what was a pretty challenging year for me last year with some family deaths and, you know, things along those lines to this year going, what does my next, you know, level look like in my life and my business and kind of, you know, looking at writing a new chapter. Um, mm-hmm. So under contract on a new hotel right now, uh, you know, finalizing a partnership in a distillery and spirits and trying to look at, you know, expanding my hospitality brand and footprint. And most importantly, just enjoying the season I'm at with my kids, you know, my two daughters, eight and six. And, you know, my, my wife, we're, we're in such an amazing season with our family. It's almost like I want to put it like in a bubble and, and freeze. Yeah, don't mess time. it up. It's so good right now. And that's also one of my limiting beliefs and fears is like, if I go 10 X, how does that trickle down and impact and have a ripple effect in, in my marriage with my kids, with my own routine? And my wife and I went out on a date and I'll, I'll pass the mic here in a second, but we went out on a date and I was like, I'll be honest, like the opportunities that I'm going after right now, they excite me. They, they challenge me. And there's a, there's a topic, uh, a, a term called you stress, E U S T R E S S. And it's actually a healthy form of stress. It's a healthy form of stress that forces you outside your comfort zone. It forces you to build new skills, new relationships. And I feel like I'm in a, in a, in a, in a space right now, kind of in a pressure cooker where I have the healthy level of stress, but there's this little voice that really has been, if I look back on all of the big leaps, you know, 10 X leaps I've taken in my life, that is always like, but what about this? And what about that? And it's always the, you know, the, the things that I think are, are healthy to discern and, and think about and kind of have that healthy level of paranoia and concern around them. But I was talking with Marie, my wife, and we were having some wine and I was like, I'm concerned that if I go and chase my goals and my dreams for this next big 10 X in my business and in finances, that it's going to fuck up our, our, our family life right now, because it's such a beautiful space and season that we're in. And she's like, and this is, this is honestly why I love my wife so much and why I think having an amazing partner is very critical for entrepreneurs and big hard chargers like we are. She's like, change is good. Every time you've gone after something big, we know that your values and your priorities have always kept us front and center and at the top of that decision matrix. So whatever you decide to do, I know that you'll filter those decisions based on me and our girls. And this change has always led to beautiful things in hindsight that um, have impacted our lives in very positive ways. So I'm in that season right now and I am experiencing a lot of youth stress. Um, but at the same time, I have some fears and some limiting beliefs around going after that next big thing, you know, is gonna, is gonna mess some stuff up in my personal life. And I want to make sure that I'm being as realistic and proactive as I possibly can around how to mitigate some of those potential fears. Mm-hmm. You stress is healthy. It's good. Mikey, you want to go? <clears throat> yes. <laughs> like, what's the um, question? <laughs> yeah. No, the question you know was, I mean, the question was my, we had to let Matt go because Matt, Matt's vibrating at another level right now. So I wanted to let him go. But the question was, what are you reading right now that you would recommend? And um, how do you digest the inordinate amount, the incredible amount of data and information and news and reels and short bits and blah, 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 Twitter feeds. How are you digesting all of it? What is a productive, healthy uh, balance for you and what has worked for you in terms of consuming and what are you consuming? So 
a, a theme that I've been thinking and talking about a lot lately, Karen and I were just speaking at Brandon Turner's Better Marriage Summit last week. I think we have to be really aware of the seasons that we're in. And, and I think Karen and I are in like this really interesting season that, you know, I've, I've known has been coming for a while, but I'm in just like this crazy period of transition and it's, it's just interesting. Um, so a book that I'm reading right now, I'm reading two books right now. I'm reading, uh, 10 X is easier than two X. The one that, uh, Maddie talked about, I actually coached with Dan Sullivan for a couple of years and, um, I, that's really challenging a lot of my thinking right now, which I'll touch on in a minute, um, that I realized that I've lost because of the season that I was in. And so I don't know if the lost is, I don't know if lost is the right word. Maybe I shelved a certain version or a certain thinking of me for a season because of mm -hmm. where I was at. And, and that's what I'm really wrestling with right now is like, how do you, you know, how do you really identify what seasons you're in and, and know what, you know, what lessons and what learning and, and what, what version of you to kind of really pull out. So I resonate with what you mean, Maddie's you mean you, you kind of took your foot off the pedal and the 10 X strat, like 10 X pressure or, or pushing for 10 X versus two X for a season. Is that what you mean? And then whether or yeah, not you still have it in you. Yeah. But, but it, you know, those, those seasons. Okay. So we're empty nesters now. Kate and left the house. Like I'm like legit empty nest. Um, and Kara and I are just like, we've been preparing for this season for a while, but also like I told Kara three or four months ago, I said, <laughs> you know, I kind of feel like we left a lot on the table the last 10 years. Like, I kind of feel like the last decade was like the lost decade. You know, you get in these weird, like, like head spaces and she's like, yeah, I, I kind of, kind of been thinking that too. And then we like paused and, um, you know, just really started talking about it. And it's like, man, our kids were teenagers. We exited a business 10 years ago. Um, I've done some crazy stuff in the last 10 years too. And I think this is part of the challenge of being in communities. Like we're all in and growing and reading and getting all these voices in our head is like, we start to like benchmark against everybody else instead of like what we wanted and getting clarity. And so the thing that, you know, Kara and I've really been talking about is Kara says this a lot. She always says that, you know, we need to be firm in our values, but flexible with our goals. And mm -hmm. what I was really focused on and, and clear on the last really 20 years, we wanted to be, you know, we wanted to be present with our kids. Um, and, and I think we did a really good job of that, but I'm kind of in a season of like, I'm ready to 10 X now. And so I'm like, I'm battling this old version of me that has been like, okay, let's kind of, you know, back to your point, Ashish, let's kind of take it easy. Let's make sure we're present with the kids. We had an exit. Um, and, and when I made that statement, like, I feel like I left a lot on the table. Well, maybe I did, but I think it was intentionally. And it's not always about more and it's not always about growth and it's not always about, you know, escalation. So I think it's just knowing what season that we're in and making sure that that aligns too. And then back to the like learning question, how do you you know, how do you digest and navigate all of this? I think, I think you have to know what season you're in to really know that. Because I think of two, I think of two periods of time where I was like absorbed with learning. And one was when I started my first business and everything was about the service business, the HVAC business. How do I create a mm -hmm. better, you know, HVAC company? How do I become a better leader? And so everything that I was absorbing for like six to eight years was just all about me becoming a better leader and then my industry in general. And then, you know, as kind of time went on, I started learning about real estate and investing in real estate and you kind of become a generalist. So you start studying more of a, a wide, diverse um, area. And then I think, and I think that's okay when you're kind of in a generalist season, but I feel like I'm kind of entering back into a, and this go, comes where the, you know, the 10X versus 2X. The reason why 10X is easier than 2X, and I remember just, you know, talking with Dan about this so many times and Ben and him did such a great job in the book. 10X is actually easier than 2X because when you're in 2X growth, you're doing everything, or you're, at least you are you know, doing a bunch of different things and maybe you're not doing it well. But to get into 10X growth, you have to have laser focus on what it is you really want to accomplish. What, are your, you know, what is your zone of genius? Stay in that. And when I started my first business, it was like we were growing so fast. I had no choice but to be in that 10X arena. But then when we start to slow down, it's really easy to get into that 2X mode, which there's nothing wrong with 2X, but to get into that 10X arena is kind of like, you got to get really focused on what you're good at. And I think back to the learning and what you're absorbing when we're in kind of like that 1X or 2X mode, or we're in this zone of monotony where we really don't feel like we're accomplishing what we really want to accomplish. It's probably because we're, we're um, digesting too much information and we're not getting laser focused. And so I'm really trying to figure out, you know, like, what is it that I really want to do? What is it that I really want to focus on? Um, and the last thing I'll say, I'm reading this book right now called 
um, Time Benders, which mm. is kind of in the same. It's kind of in the same thread. By the way, it's like a Christian author, and so it's all about like Kairos time versus Kronos time. But he talks about how like the world lives on Kronos time, but when we really find ourselves in zones of exponential growth, so it's kind of in the same thread. You're kind of living on Kairos time. You're learning how to multiply time, and that could be through people. It could be through eliminating things that don't bring impact to us. Um, it could be through literally um, just not doing things that don't that don't bring those 10x returns. So um, that's kind of where I'm at. I love it. Yeah. Mooch? Yeah. Um, 10x versus 2x is a great book. The, I read that recently. I think it's, it's, I think it's a great one for entrepreneurs that are kind of stuck or that are kind of trying to discover what's next or that have hit a, a wall or a ceiling. So I'd put an advertisement behind that. You know, if we dig into, there's probably a topic around, I've been studying a lot of like the history of Apple and Apple's different revenue building and things at different time that, that took stuff to the next level and trying to, and I've been, we've been creating a bunch of reports for our own companies, trying to mirror, you know, some of what they did at different times to go 10 X instead of two X. So maybe that'll be a fun topic for later. That would be one, that would be one to be able to kind of dissect because mm -hmm. I've been just dissecting it a lot and trying to figure out what is that next product. Like the long story short is like the Mac was all the revenue for a long time. And then, yeah. and then the, I, and then the iPhone became all the revenue. And by next year, their streaming services are probably going to make more than iPhone and computer together. So like the, you know, as they shift. And so there's some really interesting things about 10 X versus two X. When you try to look at your company, um, I am rereading right now, uh, the conversion code, uh, just based on it's a sales and marketing book and a sales and marketing kind of tactic book. It just really goes into the details of, you know, building a subscriber service. And when you're going into selling something, really knowing, you know, who you're selling, you know, a high ticket sales. It's like, before you call the person back, like checking out their Facebook, seeing who they are, seeing what kind of dog they have, like, you know, that sort of stuff, whatever it takes to kind of personalize some conversations. So some really simple stuff. I read it years ago when we started building, um, my software company and then trying to reteach uh, some things with that. Cause that's part of the, the season that I'm in, you know, you guys mentioned um, the balance of like life, the balance of like family or like friends or whatever during that 10 X two X. I just want to hit on it really quick. Even though it's not Ash's question. Um, the, my, I've lived my life on so many different levels of that scale. Right. So the a very extreme in a lot of things. So there are periods of time where I have, the balance where I work hard for a week and the, and then we went and traveled the world for three weeks. And then I'd go back home and I'd work really hard for a week and travel the world for three weeks. And I did that for a long time. And that was probably like the closest balance to having it all together. But no matter what, when you're trying to weigh the stuff, you know, it's one over another, no matter what. So when you're building up all the way, the fan, there is going to be trade off on the family side, or if you're too much family, there is going to be trade off on the business side. I guess one of the things that's been great for us and our business, you know, Maddie, you're like, Hey, I talked to Marie about it. It's so like, that's the key is right. Like warning them ahead of time. Like, Hey, I've got this opportunity, but here's what might happen. And are you in or not? It doesn't solve everything. And sometimes afterward, they're like, I said I was in, but I'm not. Let's like backtrack. This is like <laughs> a little bit more extreme. The cool thing about the, what the way that I've done my businesses is, is it's been really, really cyclical and opportunistic. So usually the market now determines it for me. So like mm -hmm. end of 2020, we're chilling, like we're family, like we're doing family time. I'm not working very much. And then January, 2021, I'm like, oh, I got to There's a huge opportunity. I got to put my, you know, my the, the iron on the fire. And then it was like no family time for that year. And it was just, I was working just around the clock for like these big grabs and then there's slow time again. So I think for me, it's like, it ends up being cyclical. I don't think there's, I have not been able to find that balance. And then the same thing, like now it's looking at stuff in the in-between time. Is it time for that next opportunity or not? If not, then I'm going to focus on fam you know, more time with, with family, but if as soon as that opportunity goes. So it's an interesting conversation of balance with it all. I think the, um, your question about how do we sort out what information is good or why, I think figuring out what you're trying to learn about at the time is really focusing on that. So I've been really focused on uh, business tactics and news. And so like, I don't really need inspiration stuff right now. I feel like I'm doing pretty good with that. I don't really need, you know, the Tony Robbins or the Ed Milet or even like, I used to love listening to Tim Ferriss, but it wasn't always really applicable or Joe Rogan, like really fun conversations, but not really applicable. And so 
the way that I sort through it is just really based on topic. Like you could still listen to something for fun. You can go, I, I want to do nothing for the next hour. I'm going to turn or three hours. I'm going to turn on Joe Rogan and just like let my brain think about CIA or whatever he wants to talk about for the day. Um, but the, I'm focused on a lot of news. And when it comes to like, how do I actually study the news? So I subscribe to like nine different business sources, you know, Bloomberg, New York Times, like all of these different, you know, big news organizations. I have the paid versions of all of them. And I get this daily email from all of them. And they're like, here's the five or six articles we think are important. And so the cool thing about like that little synopsis is I'm able to open the email, look at the five, click on the one and go, that's something that I want to learn about. Because I think more than anything else, figuring out how do I need to make this, I need to know more about like what decisions should I be making right now? Is there any giant opportunities coming up? And that's all news-based instead of inspiration-based. I think the best way to sort it out and figure out what to focus on or how do you like sort through the noise is be really specific on what you're trying to get out of it. Uh, and if you're sure about what you're trying to get out of it, then, um, you know, then I think you can pick the right topics. It's okay to listen to stuff for fun too. It's okay to just go, no, I just want to, I want to read a book that's fantasy. I want to read Lord of the Rings again or something like that. You know, you can, you can have that be intake stuff that you're doing too. What about you, Ash? Well, I, I love how my question has m morphed into this discussion because I think it's, it's uh, exactly why we launched the podcast, right? Um, or why we're doing this, this kind of format, because it's, it's people don't get to see really inside the challenge of building a, a pretty successful business and then also finding harmony in your personal life and then learning how to go back and forth and, and the ups and downs and all that. So I'm glad that you guys all shared. Um, I think really quick, I'm kind of in a season where, uh, um, I've been grinding pretty hard for a decade or so and the and COVID almost wiped me out personally and wiped the business out. But we survived and I think that um I think that I've kind of taken a step back and we've kind of come through it with like sort of a hockey stick type of format. So it's it's really amazing. But I'm kind of just taking a step back, like, okay, well, what's next? And so um for me you know, coming over here for five weeks and, and kind of taking a breather and, and spending time with my family, something that I've not done in this format before, um, giving me a chance to like sort of reflect on like, what is it that we're really trying to do in this season? What's next? Um, and, you know, what's really, what's really driving your behavior and why are you doing what you're doing? And so that's been really fun. And, and kind of connecting to what I'm digesting is, I, I'm definitely very much more fascinated with current news and or politics than I've probably ever been. And I'd say that in the last 10 years of my career, I didn't listen to anything. I never watched the news. I was never involved in politics. I like kept my head down. I was completely ignorant to what was happening outside of my world. And I think a lot of my or our, I guess, let's just say my success is because of that. I was not distracted with anything else. But I'm in a season now where it's like I kind of want to be interested in a few different things. What is what is um I guess what's just like spawning my curiosity? And then, you know, I'm really interested in a lot of philosophy right now. So I'm actually reading the Bhagavad Gita for the first time. I've never read the Bhagavad Gita. I'm listening to like all these things about um, you know, like Jordan Peterson and there's a really great series on the Bible uh, online. There's like a 30 part series on this professor who talks about the Bible. So I'm just like interested in exploring different parts of thinking in our minds and human behavior. And I think all of this for me is going to triangulate to something, to something 10 X. I don't know what that quite is yet, but that's kind of the season. So I'm, I'm digesting a few different things. Um, and, and, you know, back to what Matt and, Mike just said is that I am not sure this is probably the first time I've actually communicated this, but like, I'm not sure how to communicate this to, to too many people. And when I, even when I communicate to my wife, she's so open about, well, it's okay. It'll, it'll come together. Just keep doing it. Keep your head down. And, uh, when is the right time? We'll, we'll jump and leap. I also want to say it is easier to do 10x than 2x because you, you're thinking about leveraging and you're not saying small and all the little, little things kind of get out of the way. And when you start thinking about the little things, you kind of almost put limits on yourself, right? 
So yeah, I, I have a lot of ideas, but they're all one or two X ideas. So to like almost be patient on, is this really a 10 X idea? Is this really something worth chasing? Like worth spending time on? There's a lot of two X ideas that you could spend time on. Yeah. Done. Right. With I, all our experience, I, I mean, you could double money pretty easily or do totally. double your effort or double your scale. Like, I mean, you just do two, two times more what you're doing now and whatever that means. But like the 10X really kind of what Mike was saying is like, it really challenges your beliefs. It's really challenging like your, your normal thought patterns. So that's where I'm, that's where I'm at. Um, I like, I like that point though, that you brought up from the perspective of, I think it depends on the person's season and life goals. And I love what Mike said, right? Of like, your values are firm. Your goals can be flexible. I, I feel like I'm kind of in the season where, where Mike is coming out of in the sense of I'm at least in my own head saying, well, I'd love to make $10 million. I'd be okay with making two and making sure that my family is prioritized in that process. I'd be willing to give up and leave some chips on the table right now to get something that I feel is way more valuable than commas and zeros showing up on my balance sheet at the moment. But then the, the hard charging me goes, why can't I do both? Yeah. And I think that's, yeah. that's the philosophical debate I'm having in my own head right now, which is how can I 10 X and still keep my marriage and my quality time with my kids at the focal point of every decision, every scheduling, every commitment that I make. And so I'd be curious to know, Mike, looking back in hindsight, and Aaron, you've been through many of these and been on different ends of the spectrum. I know, Ash, you as well. What would you say to that question? How, looking back, could you have 10 x and still had the same level of commitment and focus on your wife and your kids in that season. Do you want to go, Mr. Amucha Stiggy? So he said I, Mike first. This is, <laughs> you know, what's interesting? Like I feel, I read a, I read a book one time, I think it was uh, the, the corner office and they were talking about first gen entrepreneurs. And the problem, uh, the problem that first gen entrepreneurs experience, and I, I've, I've started to really recognize this in my own life. So first, well, what they were talking about was first generation American entrepreneurs. So the first generation entrepreneurs that come to America, and there's like all these statistics on how like they just, they, they came and they had nothing and, and they grew their businesses. They really escalated. And then you get to this point where, you know, whether it's five years, 10 years, whatever, where now you have something and you watch where this plateau happens. And it's because now we've built something of value. And so we start to lose the version of us that didn't have anything to risk. I don't have anything to risk because I don't have anything. Like I had nothing to lose. And that doesn't directly correlate, but what I've been pondering with that, you know, why, why do they start to plateau? Well, it's because we, we now have something to lose. We have value, we have net worth, we have assets. And, and so we, we stop risking as much. And so when I'm thinking about, when, when I started my first business, Kara and I had some very clear values at a young age that we wanted to be present parents. We wanted to you know, be able to travel together. We wanted our kids to see the world. I didn't want to you know, work seven days a week. It's one of the main reasons why I started my business. And so those values drove us into business. And then, and I'm not saying this isn't easy because it's really, or that it's easy. It's really easy to get out of balance in the business. But also I went into that business and we grew so fast that I had to surround myself with very talented people. I had to get out of my own way or sacrifice my family. So it was like, I'm a new entrepreneur. I'm a new dad. I'm a new husband. And if I want to keep all of these things in balance, then I have to figure out how to you know, be the CEO of my house and be the CEO of my business at the same time. Um, and I don't mean CEO in a, you know, a business, but like, how do I, how do I fulfill all the things that I want on both sides? And it was really like, just stay in my zone of genius at my business. Well, now when I think back to it, I actually have some fear around and Maddie just getting to the question. Like I actually have some fear now 
just like a first gen entrepreneur, a first generation American entrepreneur. Now, when I start thinking about, you know, the next business or the next venture or, or even, um, you know, putting somebody in place, we've all had so many people partnerships or people that we've hired that didn't work out. And so we, now we have this level of fear about continuing to grow our business, just like that first gen entrepreneur did, because we only think about the negative, like our brain is really good at imagining negative scenarios. It's really hard for us to like, as, especially as we have more and more partnership fallouts or businesses fail or, or all of the above. And I'm not saying we shouldn't pay attention to those lessons, but it gets, for me, it gets harder and harder and harder to believe in a positive outcome where I can have a 10x business like my first one was and keep my family together because we see all the failures. And this is why I love this podcast that we're doing too, because you know all of us want to talk about our wins, but I've got a lot of failures. Like I've got a lot of partnerships that have fallen apart. I've got a lot of deals that went south. I've got a lot of mistakes that I made as a husband and as a father. And now when I analyze like launching a new business venture versus like losing my family. I feel like I can't have both. And it's because of the war wounds. Like I have all these yeah. scars that, that are fear for me. I want to, I want to comment to that really quick and then Mooch, you respond. But like, I think for me too, Mike, I mean, it's clear that you've had success. There's tons of failures, but you fight through all those failures, which takes a ton of energy and inertia. And there's probably you know, to have one success, you have to climb through thousands of issues and mistakes and failures to have something that you would consider to be successful. And so for me, sometimes the, and I think this is all mind for all of us, but I think that the thing for me is like, how are you going to repeat that again? I, do you really believe that the, the possibility, the probability is in your favor to do all of that again with that much energy? that much inertia with that same outcome. And I think, again, this is all mind. We can argue about this all day long, but that's kind of what shows up for me. Mooch, you go. I got bad news, guys. You can't do both, 100%, no way. The um, time is mm. finite. Time, it, it is just finite. It always has to be a choice. You're, like your brain is earning ten thousand dollars an hour, twenty thousand dollars an hour. Like, could you four x and do it both? Could you two x and do it both? You might even be able to ten x and do it both. But there is a potential potential level of like that your business can get to or your money can get to. That like your like your brain earns too much per hour, and if you're splitting it, it's not going to happen. Now there are times when like the brain needs like a break and you need some rest, and so like. Is there this balance of like, we all say like, oh, work really hard, but then take a week off. Then we can like, you know, go up to Alaska and we go fishing and there's, and so the brain gets to like, think about this other stuff. So there is like recharge that I think is needed, but the, but no, you have to make a choice. I've had to, and there's, and I've made the choices on, on all different aspects. And there's sometimes afterward we go, that choice was worth it. There's sometimes we mm -hmm. say that choice was hard, but it really paid off. There were sometimes we say, hey, that choice, you know, Aaron put his business on the back burner that year, but we made these great memories and it was worth it. And this other opportunity came. But I tell you what, we've had just as much regret as going like, wow, that was a huge business opportunity that Aaron had during that time. And we were choosing to like, but our family was in shambles. And so we saved this thing instead. And it's not about regret, but it is, but there is like this financial thing of going like, Whoa, that was this huge opportunity that we made a choice. So no, I think that you need to make a choice. Whatever choice you make is okay. But you need to make but you need to make sure that you know if it's the season of this instead of that, the other one will suffer. And as long as you can like pull yourself into the future and say, I won't regret that. Like just know what your trade off is. Yep. Like the hey, I'm gonna go all the way in this and in, in, in I'm gonna go all the way in family, and the trade off is this isn't gonna ever get as big as it really could have. But I'm okay with that. Maddie's saying it's okay if I only make a couple million bucks. It's fine. Or you go, but yeah. I no. My 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 answer is is simple from my own stuff, and maybe uh and and maybe I I hundred percent believe it. Like I could I could say you know I could try to like downplay it or say maybe somebody else will be different. I don't think you can do both. I don't I don't think you'll ever be able to achieve either thing to its fullest if you've got two because they are conflicting. You know, spending time with kids. And, and wives is conflicting I, from spending time at the office. And time is finite. You only got so many hours in the day. 
I think what, what, go ahead, Maddie. I was going to say, no, where's, where's your mind going with that? I see the, the wheels spinning. Well, I, I was just thinking, I think like, I think it comes down to time, but it comes down to quality of time. Right, Aaron? Because I think you can argue that, well, well, I'm going to, I'm going to make, I'm going to le- a lot of this is mine. A lot of this can be excused. Like Maddie, you put something in our chat a couple, like last week, something about how young men are spending more time today playing video games than they did a decade ago. Right. And so like, I could argue that says, you know what? I'm, I'm not in a season where I need to work super hard. I'm going to chill with my family. I'm going to be home more on my phone with Instagram, playing video games with my kids. Or like playing video games by myself while my kids are in the other room doing their homework. And I think that, you know, I see my wife and how she parents the kids. Like it's so present. It's so focused on them. And you could do 10 minutes of that and get the relational value of being a great parent and having that connection with them versus spending two hours completely distracted being in the same room. And I, I heard another guy, uh, I can't remember now who it was, said the same thing. Because like I, I used to use this as excuse. Well, we're in the same room. Like I'm working here. They're playing there. It's fine. And sometimes I have to let that to be okay because at least we're together. But they're perceiving that as, and I'm talking about kids now, it's worse with the wife. But you know, with the kids, they're not reading that like, oh, well, at least he's around. No, he's distracted. He's focusing on something that's more important than me. And so I think coming back to what you're talking about, Mooch, is I think you're right. You can't have it completely both ways, but I think it does, the quality does matter than more than the quantity, for sure. The quality is the hack, right? Like, quality is the hack. About, you're talking about minimum effective dose, right? Like, <laughs> like 15 yeah. minutes of focus with, with my son is going to be as good as two hours of not focused. But I guess my, my concept of like why you can't really do either to the fullest is because like two hours of deep focus with my son of us like doing something really, really intense together instead of two hours over here. Cause you're talking about, I can go work for an hour and 45 and I give him 15 minutes of this. And that's the hack of how you can kind of do both like quick little, like just a little short story. The last two and a half weeks, Kalina and my kids were in California traveling without me. And part of it is because I've got this thing. I've got this thing in my season. And so for the last two and a half weeks, I've been working seven days a week like 14 hour days. I'm in my office till nine or 10 at night. And I got six months worth of productivity done in three weeks that I hadn't done in a while. Right. And they came back and it's hot. And they're like, we, we think we should go back to California for a few weeks. And I'm like, go, like go. Cause I'm going to get another, I'll have a year worth of stuff done here. So the, and I know that the, and I know the trade off is I'm not part of those memories in Newport or Tahoe, the other stuff. Like it's, it's a trade off that I'm making. Um, and you know, and you hope you don't regret it later but but anyway i think ash you are talking about the hack quality is better than quantity you can't just measure stuff in hey i was eight hours at work i was eight hours at home it's all good like oh we were sitting watching tv together versus like i went out and taught him how to ride a bike Hmm. kara kara always talked about uh work-life integration i don't think there's balance like i think we have to integrate our lives and that's one thing that like you know we, we didn't have, I mean, obviously we didn't have every business conversation or financial conversation, but like we did almost everything as like, we had conversations at the dinner table that were about business. And, you know, we were not that family. It was like, you can't talk about business, you know, when we're at the dinner table or even on date night or anything. And so I think it's really just about integration. And I love what Aaron said too, because really, I think the kids just have to understand what season you're in. And as long as whether they're little kids or it's the wife and Maddie, you kind of talked about this with your wife. Um, you know, Kara and I, if I, if I'm going to be working for two weeks straight where I'm going to be home late every night, I'm not saying I never did that. I did that. Um, but just under, like letting the kids know, um, that this is the season that I'm in and I'm going to be traveling a lot or whatever. I think just bringing them, integrating them into the conversation is the important part. Um, I think as I was listening to all this, I think what the real challenge, I think as we get further along and we have more, just like that first gen American entrepreneur, once we know more and we learn more and we have more of those battle wounds, I think, I think our mind starts to get a little, I think we start to think about all the, the things that we probably shouldn't be thinking about. Like even, even f- like my, I'm going to lose my family. Oh, really? Like 
the last 24 years, did you lose your family? No, like I've, I'm a freaking good dad. And here's the other side of it. Doesn't matter how good of a dad you are, like you're going to create trauma. I had Dylan on my podcast two weeks ago and he was telling this story. He was telling this story about how Dylan when, is when Mike's he, son, by the way. Yeah. Sorry for those of you that don't know. And he's 23 now getting married in two weeks, guys. Um, I'm going to have a daughter-in-law. So he's telling this story about when, when we, uh, when they were in high school and he first started getting excited about boating, him and his friend would have like their, their water, like their swim shorts on at like two o'clock in the afternoon, just wondering when I was going to get home. And I'm running my own business at this point in time. And he'd be calling me and he'd, he'd be like, Hey, are we going to go to the lake tonight? And I'd be like, I don't know. It depends, you know, what time I get off. And then he'd text me a little bit like, what time are you going to get off? I'm not sure yet. And this was one of those moments where as good as like, I had no idea how freaking excited they were every single day waiting to know. Mm. And he made this comment. He said, we never knew if we were going to actually get to go to the lake or not, but we were excited about it all day long. And most nights we didn't go to the lake. And I was like, oh, I'm such a, like, I had no idea how excited they were. But like Aaron says, you know, all he cared, like the days that they did go to the lake, like kept him coming back and kept him excited. Right. And so should have I left work every single day for an entire summer just because they were excited about going to the lake? I mean, I could have, but I didn't even know. And so no matter what, here's my point. We're going to screw our kids up no matter how good of parents we are or aren't, or how good of a husband we are or aren't. Like we're going to create trauma in these kids. And I think our, I think what we really need to focus on is like, how do we, how do we make the least amount of mistakes along the way as possible? I, I have a thought on this real quick, and I'm curious. This is more of a philosophical debate question because I agree with you, Mike. Is, is effort more important, effort and intention, or is results more important and outcomes? Mm. Because I know for me, like, you know, a lot of my F ups in life was like, well, I didn't have bad intentions. And I gave my best effort, but the results sucked. So does that make it okay that the results sucked? And then there's other times where I'm like, as long as I leave everything out on the floor and I gave it my all, I can live with what the scoreboard says. It, effort's how you can judge yourself, but effort is not how anyone else will ever judge you. The, um, mm. I, you know, side note, I got a surf lesson from Mike's son, Dylan last week, and I've made just huge improvements since then. So he'd be proud if I send him over my videos from today. So incredible guy uh, that Mike has raised over yeah, there. True, when it comes true. to how we get measured, I remember in my 20s being so upset with my parents. I remember in my 30s still being pretty darn upset with them. And then I remember becoming a parent and going, oh, they did the best they could. So I didn't start judging them on their effort until I was like in my 40s. And until then, I spent 30 years judging them on their results. What I learned in my 40s is parenting's hard and everyone <laughs> does the best they can. And like the, you know, they just did the best with what they were given and they were grown up different and had different whatever. And so it takes a long time to get, I think it takes a long time to get judged, judged on your effort. Like the people are going to judge you on your, on your results, especially kids. Like, mm -hmm. or at least the first 40 years, if they're as, if they're as uh, unforgiving as I am. <laughs> Mike, you want to answer that? You want to try? I'm, I don't know if it was a question, but I, I agree with him. <laughs> you know, one of my good friends, Rob Murgatroyd, uh, he was telling this story about, uh, he was complaining about like his upbringing and this and that. And, and this guy, other guy, Darren says to him, you know, there should be some statute of limitations on, you know, how much we can blame our children for our childhood traumas. Right. And it's like, um, I just love that statement too. And I, I think what we're really, you know, this is such a valuable conversation for me. I don't know if the audience is going to love it, but I'm like, <laughs> I think we just get, to, when we don't know any better, there's no level of like accountability. And, and I think this is just a natural problem with like aging and getting more wisdom and learning more. We just hold ourselves to so many more things that, that we wouldn't have at a younger age. And it's almost like, man, some of this fear can be debilitating. And Karen and I were at a, we were at this Wellspring event last, last week or the week before, and Erwin McManus was talking about fear. And for me, this is kind of like the answer and the takeaway for this is like, he's like, fear is not a bad thing when we're scared or we're in this area of unknown, or we have anxiety about moving into something. He's like, 
the reason why we have fear around something, whether it's you know me not not wanting to launch a business because I'm going to get spread too thin, or I'm not going to be present, or whatever whatever it is, where am I going to get the capital? Blah blah blah. Um, he's like, fear is just us being in a place of unknown where we've never been before. And he's like, when we're experiencing fear or anxiety around something, we should run toward it and not away from it. And I think the problem with an idle mind, I'm not saying that any one of us have an idle mind, but even with learning, as she you started out with like, you know, what are you learning? And and I've I've talked to Aaron about this and Maddie A. And and I think both of you guys separately have said that you're kind of in a season where you're like, you know, not learning as much. And we we like get into masterminds where we go through these seasons where we know for two or three or four years we got to get into this place where like in order to get to the next level version of us, we have to get into we have to go into a season of learning. But even Timothy in the Bible says that there's don't be like people who are always learning but never coming to the full knowledge of the truth. And right. I think that when we get stuck in these seasons where we've learned so much and we stop executing. I think that's what I'm really taking away from this is like, maybe I know too much that's debilitating me and keeping me from moving into certain things because I have fear around some knowledge that somebody has taught me, but maybe I don't fully understand it. And when I launched my first business, I, or, or like when you first have kids, yeah, you're learning, but also like you're just going for it because you got these little guys that got to survive. You have this business that needs to survive. And you're just doing the next right thing where when we get to the point where we've been learning for 20 years or 30 years or the last three years, I've just been studying. It's too much knowledge and not enough execution. So maybe that's part of it. I think it's a good point. I think we be this information age, and I'm not just going to point at younger generations. I think in general, it has opened up this door to quote unquote enlightenment. We're such an enlightened world now because we have all this access to this information and perspectives and wisdom everybody's an expert in everything right and i love what you what you said mike which i think goes back to my mantra for success is i am dumb enough to believe in myself every morning when i put my two feet on the floor and i'm just smart enough to take action on what i think is the next right thing to do I don't get paralyzed and, and overthink too many things. And when I do find myself in that space, it is exactly because of that. I am way overthinking a lot of these unknowns and a lot of stuff that is so far out of reach that if I just came back to simple daily execution on very default, like you don't need to be that smart. You don't need to be that wise. You don't need to be that resourced or capitalized or X, Y, or Z. You just kind of need to be smart enough to consistently take action going forward. We as human beings are pretty darn productive when we take action on the simplest and most logical things that are aligned with our goals. And so <clears throat> that's for me what Aaron or um, Mike, you had said is my goal is to build a lifestyle that looks almost the same 365 days a year. And it's a little bit different than what you're saying, Aaron, right? Which is like, hey, go do your thing for a couple of weeks and I'm going to get six months done. Whereas I think my mentality is more of, I want to build a fluid lifestyle that I know will have ebbs and flows, but 365 days a year, it has quality time with my wife and my kids in it. It's got play, rejuvenation, recharge, health, in it. It's got crushing and hustling and getting after business goals every day. And for me, that's really that mindset has challenged me to instead of thinking Monday through Fridays and Saturdays and Sundays as grouping, it's this fluid 365 days a year. And how do I consistently take time to reflect and identify how I can stack as many activities or commitments in those categories? into the most aligned way of planning that I possibly can to touch on all those boxes. Now, whether or not I'm going to get there, I don't know, but that's kind of my intention. And so far, it's, it's really started to take on a, a life form of its own that I am checking a good chunk of those boxes off every single day of the year. And whether that gets me to a hundred or a billion net worth, or it keeps me at 10, but I had a really balanced in my own perspective, a balanced lifestyle. That's where I'm still TBD, but that's, that's what I am looking at in terms of building out my business, 
my lifestyle, my health, all the pillars of values that are important to me. I'm trying to find a way to build them all into an all-inclusive approach 365 days a year. I, I, I agree with Maddie completely. I feel like I'm, I'm right there with you. I've figured out how to, re, how to integrate sort of healing and recovery and rest in a daily type of routine that allows you to go hard and fast and then do it over and over and over and over. So I, I'd be interested, Mooch, do you feel like, do you need that after you go hard for three or four weeks, working 80, 100 hours a week without any family or not necessarily that, that way? Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, I think we, like I think it's what almost you're... like the quintessential, like, you know, routine type, routine like daily routine type of lifestyle versus like go hard for a week two weeks three weeks and then take a break for a week or go on vacation i know mike doesn't like that word but yeah vacation the i think what you and matt are talking about is fantastic for you guys and i think that the I like I, I think it's great i think it's great and i think it's admirable and i think i had a lot of seasons and a lot of years like that where i had times where every time i traveled for a work trip they all came too right and we stayed together yeah. and so and i would usually attend half the conference and then like half the conference i'd be like okay i got enough i'm not going to go to the dinners tonight because i want to go to dinners with you guys and so the and it was a great time and it was like that great balance but i do know that no matter what during those times like the um so whatever that balance is going to be i think you could probably come up with the balance that becomes the 365 and you just gotta see what's going to be weighed no matter what, it was like, oh, I didn't, when we were there in Florida at that conference, I didn't spend as much time with them as I wanted. I didn't get to do all those different events. I didn't get to spend as much time at the conference as I wanted. I didn't get to go to this, this, and that. And I didn't get to talk to that guy and that guy. And that would have been a really good conversation to be a part of. Um, so I think you can decide whatever you want your balance to be. And you can do that 365 days a year. I think the difference is, I, you know, it's seasonal for me and it's build mode. It's like, I, I see these short-term opportunities that come up. I didn't come off the last three weeks needing a break. I came off the last three weeks like wishing I could just keep going. Yeah. So I'm in the mm. middle of something. I'm in the middle of something where I'm like, okay, <laughs> so now it's like six o'clock, like 6.30 last time. I'm like, okay, I need to stop working and I need to go have dinner with my family and go hang out with Kalina and like see the kids because like, they've been gone for a few weeks when like if they weren't here, I'd have been just going. <laughs> So I, I think, think people also need to remember that that is a blessing. If you have that where you're working hard for three weeks and you don't want to put the pencil down, that's a blessing. That's a not, not a burden to man there. Yeah. My friend. Like my, my break has been going surfing in the morning or surfing in the afternoon or going golfing or going and playing pickleball. Like I have these breaks to like stimulate my exercise and my energy and generate energy in different ways. But I, but yeah, I didn't come off going like, oh man, that was hard. I don't want to do that anymore. Awesome. Well, do you guys want, do you guys want to p pivot to some other topics or you want to keep going lifestyle for the rest of the day? We better pivot or we're going to lose half our listeners. Good episode, boys. Really uh, good topics. Lots of fun, different topics. We brought in a lot of personal stuff today. So I think that will be, um, it's always good for us. I think I'm learning a lot while we're doing this and hopefully people do too. Uh, the cost of this episode or the cost of listening to this episode is that somebody, you have to share this with somebody. So if you're enjoying the conversation and you're enjoying what, we're, what, what you're having here for free, we're providing this content for free, share it with somebody that may get value from it as well. And, um, and that's it, boys. Good seeing you. Talk Bye, to you later. Bye, everybody. See ya.